My worst nightmare is coming true. I'm being sucked into a drawn out legal process that may take months. Spontaneously, I perform an act of karma yoga to accelerate the process. I raise my hand. Excuse me, Judge. I refuse to sign my name. Courtroom stunned. You could hear a pin drop. Judge can't believe what he's hearing. Why not? I answered that I do not agree with what is going on, that I flew back to the United States on my own money, and that I only came to the United States so I could get a new passport and return to my meditation cave in the Greek islands. Flabbergasted, the judge inquires, uh, are you aware that if you do not sign your name, I will have to put you in jail? Um, I refuse to sign my name. Hmm. Judge Franz orders a court policeman to handcuff me, and I go out the back door into a police paddy wagon, headed off for prison in Detroit, downtown. Going downtown, kid. Detroit prison. Well, <clears throat> this is where I'm going to be for the next six weeks. Oh, yeah. Well, the Detroit County Prison, <laughs> hardcore place. Not like that underground holding cell and the tombs in Manhattan. Okay, I'm walking to a cell block. Oh, people are, prisoners are shouting all kind of shit at me. I'm not in the mood. I say nothing to anybody. Subdued. Walked on a common corridor, 16 cells in a row. Well, uh, however, I feel strangely at home. Mm -hmm. I thank the Buddha yeah. for uh, finding me refuge, a place to meditate. Ever since I returned to the United States, I've even contemplated, seriously contemplated, renting a motel room so I could meditate. Find a calm space. 1969, America being ripped apart by this horrendous war. We call it the Vietnam War. <laughs> In Vietnam, they call it the American War. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was about three years old looking up at my first guru, my father, and he said, Son, if anybody ever tries to get you to go into the military, run as fast as you can. Wise words. Well, uh, in my cell, I wear my Indian zadu sarong, and uh, but soon an uptight guard uh, shouts, "Hey, kid, take that dress off and put on a pair of goddamn fucking pants." I'm not in a mood to obey anybody, especially this jerk. Well, then the uh, leader, the rock boss himself. Uh, rushes in and says, you know, put your pants on because the last person in this cell, that guard shot him in the stomach with his handgun. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now relax. Oh. I have a new friend. The rock boss. Peter.
murderer. Hmm. Peter tells the other inmates to keep their hands off me. I break my silence to him. And <laughs> Funny enough, it turns out that the day I you know, came in, Detroit's most notorious motorcycle gang leader was busted, and they thought I must be him. <laughs> you know, who else would have the you know, spiritual audacity <laughs> to not talk to them? <laughs> You know, uh, in the daytime, the common corridor is kept open. Wander down to Peter's. He's got the first cell nearest the um, guardhouse because he rules this 16 cell unit. He's made his place not at home. Interesting book. Some on the Dow. Fascinating book. Yeah, doing a long time. Detroit County Jail. For me, mellow place. Yeah, two weeks drift by. I talked to my father on the telephone, on the prison phone. Dad says, look, son, when a big storm comes, plants bend in the wind rather than break off like a brittle twig. <coughs> he says, look it. I know, you know, you're never going into the military, but why don't you uh, kind of bend and, uh, you know, take the physical as soon as possible because, well, you might not pass the physical. And if you do, then, yeah, then refuse to go. Refuse to have anything to do with the military. Well, back in my cell, I meditate on what my old man said, and because he is my unconditionally loving old man, his words make sense, mm -hmm. in a way. And I start to weep, and I weep for a long time. Mm. Peter comes into my cell, puts his arm around me, says nothing. Mm -hmm. What's that, Goddess Earth? A half a million children are weeping now? Oh, uh, well, um, yeah, in Uyghur China. Just fast forward 50 years, right in the middle of the story. Okay, do that, okay. Yeah, let's fast forward 50 years, just for a moment. Uh, we're now in 2020, and a half a million Uyghur children have been separated from their parents in China. Perfect example of an over up nation state suppressing as cruelly as human nature will allow an ethnic flourishing community. And why are they taking their kids away from their parents? Half a million of them? so that they're not infected with the spiritual, religious atmosphere they get at home. Yeah, stop talking their native language, force them to speak Chinese, get them with their young. <laughs> yeah. Well, my little thing in the Detroit prison 50 years ago. <laughs> Compared to half a million, and where's their parents? Oh, they're also in prisons? The Uyghurs, you know. Thank you for reminding me of that. There's a uh, weeping children, 500,000 of them. Oh, oh, I'm back here because a prison guard is shouting at me. Hey, kid, uh, get dressed, get all your shit because you're going downtown to see the judge. What's happening? I mean, I, I still have four weeks to go until my next scheduled court appearance. So. Well, they cr jam me in with seven other prisoners to the cramp paddy wagon. Right, Danton. Yeah. Uh, once again, I'm facing Judge Freeman. 
he explains that my situation has been bothering him at home and that he doesn't think that prison is really a good place for me. <laughs> I explain honestly that I'm just fine, you know. Um, trade my meat for vegetables with the other inmates, have a secure, uh, kind of like a Buddhist meditation cell to uh, do my prayers. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like that. That makes no sense to him. He says, Judge Freeman says, look, my wife and I, we, we got on this wild overland adventure travel trip last year from Kabul, Afghanistan to Kathmandu, Nepal. And we saw uh, people, uh, I guess, Buddhists, Tibetans, dressed like you. Are you one of those uh, guys? Yes. I reply, yeah. Mm hmm uh, sincerely, compassionately, he asked me, um, what is your problem? Hmm. 